Hello YouTube, this is Frugal. Now, following on from the video I did about how to properly tweak FSX, I'm going to show you how to tweak X-Plane, but at a very high level. Again, I'm not going to fly through every single option that you could possibly change within X-Plane, but I am going to show you what you can use to measure the performance. I highly recommend you read the X-Plane manual. There are about two or three pages in that PDF which talk all about optimizing X-Plane. Read them. It's a very, very good, very comprehensive manual. It's not like FSX. Optimizing X-Plane is not a black art that it involves, involves you modifying config files. It can all be done within the sim. I also highly recommend you get this tool, which is Tech Power Up's GPU-Z or GPU-Z. It's a free tool, and it has a tab here called Sensors. This will measure your GPU's core clock. So is your graphics processor clocking up? It should be when you run X-Plane. Is the memory clocking up? Again, it should be. What's the temperature like? Is it within limits? It has an option down here called log to file. If you click on that, it will log all the sensors out to a file. Provides a mass of data. You don't really care about that too much unless you want to get really, really in depth. What you do care about though is this. Continue refreshing the screen while GPU-Z is in the background. Leave that on. Okay, with that on, run explain. I will see you in the sim in a moment. Okay, so here we are at the startup screen for Xplain. Again, just like the FSX tweaking, you want a repeatable set of tests. So turn always track real time and date off. Turn use real weather off. I am using SkyMax Pro, which is phenomenal. I highly recommend you get it, but I will choose some weather. So we're gonna put Cirrus in here. We're gonna have it daytime. The most detailed airport in the sim out of the box is KSEA, which is Seattle Tacoma. Choose that and choose a default aircraft if you possibly can. So I'm gonna choose the 172 here. Now this is the single most, def most detailed area of scenery within the entire sim. It puts the most load on you. So you're kind of starting out with a worst case in terms of these tests. So just choose that location, that aircraft, whatever time of day you want, but make sure it's fixed. Whatever weather you want, but make sure it's fixed and then say fly with these options. It's gonna take a while to load this up. So I'll see you once we get in the aircraft. Okay, so here we are in an aircraft at Seattle. Now, what I will typically do here is do most everything in the cockpit because that's where I'm gonna be spending my time when I'm flying. So the first thing you do is go up to view, make sure you have 3D cockpit command look turned on, which is the 3D cockpit that lets you look around, okay? That's how most of you are gonna be flying this aircraft. The next thing you wanna do, I have some strange blue artifacts here which I will resolve at another time. I had those the other day, actually. Very weird. Next thing you wanna do, is um, if you're running fraps, turn it off. That's it. Now, go up to the settings menu. Look at data input and output. There's a ton of stuff here which looks terribly, terribly confusing, but is very useful for optimizing the sim. Turn on frame rate. I'm not sure what times does, so we'll turn that on as well. The frame rate readout in X-Plane is very accurate indeed. Okay, so we don't actually need that. We, we don't need the times, we just need the frame rate thing. So go up to settings again, turn times off. Let me show you what you've got here. What you have here is this number, which is very important, CPU load. If that is close to one, it means your CPU is being completely swamped. You want it under one. And here we have our frame rate. Actual frame rate, sim frame rate. x -Plane maintains two frame rates, the rate at which it's drawing the updates on the screen, the actual frame rate, and the sim frame rate is the number of frames, number of uh, times per second it's updating the flight model of the aircraft. So those are, those are both pretty high. At this point, if you wanted to, now we use OpenGL in x -Plane, not DirectX. What OpenGL is, is a graphics library which is cross-platform, so it runs on Linux, it runs on Mac. It has no concept of full screen. What it does is full screen window. So you can Alt-Tab now and bring up GPU-Z. There it is. Notice my GPU core clock did go up. It's not maxed out, but it did go up. My memory clock has gone up as well. My temperature is pretty good. It's holding solid. My GPU load is 81, 83, 84% around about the 82 average. That's interesting and important to note. Go back in the sim now. Go up to your settings, go up to rendering options. Now every option here affects one of two things, either your CPU or your graphics card. If you look at the x manual, it will tell you which is affected by which option, okay? And once you've read that manual and you're comfortable, look down the bottom here, it will show you the graphics card it's using, 
and the amount of memory being used on that graphics card. Now, I have a 3 gig graphics card, so I'm using 1.2 gig of memory on that graphics card right now. Not a problem. I can start turning stuff up without swamping memory. As soon as you swamp the memory on the graphics card, you're going to suffer. You really need this number to be under the memory you have in your graphics card. Now, if you're one of the rich kids out there just running a Titan, bear in mind that Titans is actually two graphics cards in one. So even though you might have a 6 gig Titan, the chances are you're only using 3 gig of it because... The, the memory doesn't combine in SLI. Anyway, let's go up here and let's mess, mess with shadows and see what happens. So I'm going to turn shadows up to melt my GPU. Okay, this number will not change until the sim has been refreshed. So close the dialog one thing at a time. Look at that. Notice that even though that option says melt my GPU, my CPU load went up considerably. Let's go and look at GPU Z. Here's GPU Z. My GPU load was down here because we we're looking at a dialogue. Now it's back up. It has not really increased above what we had before, 81 to 84 percent, averaging 82. Interesting, huh? Let's go back into our options now. Rendering options. Let's turn on something that I know is going to kill my sim. We're going to turn the uh, number of roads here up to extreme one option at a time notice by the way memory did increase running the shadows went up from 1.2 to 1.3 close the dialog now when you change some of these options like that one it will reload the sim that can take a little while this can make it a little bit tedious but not really as tedious i think as logging in and out of fsx to redo a test over and over or even rebooting your pc after every test so just bear with it and be aware that some of these options will cause the sim to reload so once this is finished reloading, um, we will cut the video and I'll see you once it's finished reloading. Okay, so we're back in the sim now. Same view as before. My CPU load is pretty much where it was before. It's come up from where we started out. Notice my frame rate has dropped. It's gone from 50 odd down to 40 odd. Let's look at GPU Z. Here's GPU Z. GPU load is creeping back up. Hmm. Hasn't had a significant effect very very important my GPU load is actually quite low right now very interesting indeed some of these are going to give you quite strange options I have no idea why I'm getting these blue artifacts I need to resolve that I think that's a um, open GL issue let's go mess with some more options so go into settings rendering options once again so my roads are up to extreme now if I turn the cars up it's definitely gonna hurt my my sim but what we will do at this point is we will turn off HDR. And let's try that. Again, one option at a time. That will cause the sim to reload. I'll see you when it's finished. Okay, so we're back in the sim. Notice the CPU load has dropped. Okay, a, a 0 0.001 change on CPU load is significant. That has dropped. My frame rate has started to come back up again. A little bit jerky there as we move the view. Notice also my blue artifacts have gone. So that was an HDR issue that was causing that. Let's go look at the GPU. Here's the GPU load. A little bit of a spike. That's where it lagged out when I was changing the view just now. But overall, GPU load is pretty good. Memory load is great as well. Interesting. And we can keep on doing this. If you want to really tank the sim, now bear in mind X-Plane 10 64-bit is a modern sim. Now that does not mean that it performs better than FSX or DCS or any other app. What it means is it's able to take full control of every piece of hardware in your machine. So you can completely destroy your machine. Destroy in a good way. I mean, it's not going to blow up or melt or anything, but you, it will bring it to its knees. So if I turn all these things up to extreme, I'll increase the number of cars now. I will increase the number of objects. I will increase the number of trees. This is not a good idea. I'm changing everything at once. You really shouldn't do that. You really should change one thing at a time. But I just want to give you an idea of what it looks like to um, go the wrong way. So I'm going to close this dialog. It is going to reload the sim. I'll see you when it's done that. Okay, welcome back. So the sim is reloaded. Let's change my view a little bit. Let's see if we can zoom out here. No, we can't. Okay. Notice my CPU load has risen up to 997, getting dangerously close to 999 or even 1, which would be awful. My frame rate has dropped a lot. If we go and look at the GPU Z here, interestingly, not taxing my GPU. 
Now we can see here that the options that I just changed are predominantly CPU based. So adding in more scenery, more trees, uh, more roads, traffic on those roads is a CPU function not a GPU function. Again, the key here is you're trying to find a good balance that you're comfortable with. In general, X-Plane needs a frame rate above 35 frames per second to remain consistent. Running at 16, 17 here is not good. The sim is holding, you know, the aerodynamic sim of the aircraft is holding at 19, almost 20. My actual sim frame rate, my visually visual frame rate though is, is pretty low. You really want that 35 or above. But the key is to be scientific. So have this output displayed by going up to settings, data input and output, and make sure it's showing frames up here. Make sure you have a tool running like GPU-Z, which is tracking the load on your graphics processor. So you can see how that's performing as well as how your main processor is performing and change one option at a time. And do read the manual. Again, it's not at all like FSX. There is no black art here. It is fairly easy to run through the options. Look at that, 998. It is fairly easy in X-Plane to run through the options in the sim and see the effect with tools like GPU-Z and also this data input output in order to get a good balance of where you want everything to be. I hope this is helpful. Good luck with your tweaking. I will no doubt do another video later when I know more about what I'm doing, to be honest, um, showing you some of the things that helped for me, what works and what doesn't. There's also another trick you can do, which you might want to look at, by the way, if you go to alpilotx.net, that's AL Alpha Lima Pilot X, I think it's .net. He's the guy that provides a lot of free awesome terrain meshes and scenery for X-Plane. He has some tips there on optimizing the scenery library, which is messing with files, uh, text files like FSX config. It's not very hard. You might want to check that out as well. As always, my name is Frugal. Thank you so much for watching.